putting off a well, I've been doing workouts quite a lot over the past same, same uh, like a lot but I don't know what it is in the pa- have you actually or are you <laughs> no um, but the past couple of days it's just been a pu- I've been struggling to just find the motivation to get into it and the coach guy that I'm working with says it's it's determined it's discipline over motivation and, and all that sort of stuff but I just I'm, I've, 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 I'm halfway through one you know so I took a you, break you've after. got like the kind of energy of a coach like I think I could have guessed that, that you work out to be honest really like, without having seen any sort of physique or anything mm-hmm. which you can send me later obviously you know? I, I but, know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no no seriously you've seen a picture of me like four months ago you'd be like that nah never like I've put on a fair bit of weight over the past like a couple of months and that was why I got into it. That's cool, man. Yeah. What, you just wanted to bulk? I because even just like pictures that I've seen over the, like, all through my life, I think it's been like a major, it's been like a, like a confidence issue, like going on holiday and stuff like that, walking about the beach, top off, you're like six stone or something like that. That's always been a bit, <laughs> that's always been like a, a bit of a hang up uh, that I've had. Uh, and I don't know, just in, when lockdown and all that sort of stuff happened, I, I thought, now's, now's the time, like, nobody's going to see me for a bit, so I might as well just make a, a reappearance, like, a couple of stone heavier and feeling better, and, you know, so that's, that's good, bit, I, but it's, uh, it's been a, I, I think there's, a, there's like a, there's definitely a line though, like, I don't know if you've ever seen guys that are like, really built, that mm. play guitar, like the guitar looks so dwarfed sure, on them. Tiny, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, because it's never been like, that's it. That's what I was saying as well to, I've said to like, my pals and that, it was never, uh, but I do get quite obsessive about stuff when I do it, like I, I get quite obsessed with it and I'm, I'm paying money for this as well. So like the court, the, the regime thing that I'm doing and stuff. So I want to, I don't want to like spend that money and not do it to the best that I can do it. But yeah, I do get quite, obsessed about it but it was never like I'm not interested in, in the numbers and stuff like that and a part of it because I need to like measure this and measure that and, and like weight and all that sort of stuff but it's not really like a factor for me that bothers me that much it's more just seeing week on week like the progress pictures that, that where I'm like from week one to week six seeing the difference between that and that that's like the, the motivation thing but I don't care like it's never been about getting like Big, big. It's just, just so that I can, I feel better in myself, and I think, I think uh, everyone, apart from me, man, like everyone <laughs> seems to be getting into it, man. I think there's like, like it used to be that, or at least I, I thought like people who worked out were sort of like just kind of meatheads. So that. that like just mm-hmm. they've got there's nothing beyond. The, the person that's just standing right. for you that like they're just all they think about is just looking good and it's like a kind of mm. vanity thing but yep. I think we like just the way the internet is now and the more exposure people have to people that work out and stuff that is actually it's it's really important like mm-hmm. so obviously a lot of health benefits and Big uh, time. we don't Big like time. we actually don't fucking like operate in our day to day lives, anything like we would in the wild. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like in the so, wild, you would be so fucking fit and healthy. Ah, uh, exactly. But the the thing that I've noticed because I used to think with people in the gym and stuff like that. Like I used to be pure self conscious about. I would be self conscious about going to the gym because you'd see like guys that are about twenty stone, just pure muscle, and they're, they're walking about, and and you'd just be like, you'd feel inferior, and I hate that feeling. I hate. I hate doing something that I'm no good. I hate doing something that I'm no good at, basically, yeah. I, and pu- publicly. Um, so that was always like that was always an issue for me. But you find most people are like I, I, I've had a few pals that have said I've said why don't you get why don't you get into like you feel better in yourself. You're not trying to get to like this sort of stage where you're you're taking selfies in the mirror and looking like like that kind of thing where it's all, all about vanity, but it, vanity does come into it because you want to, you don't want to look like if you're insecure about something then why not do something to, to kind of yeah. try and um but i it's like i've had a few pals that have said to me um which is what i would have said to them a year ago um like they 
they feel embarrassed. They feel embarrassed about like, what they're lifting, what all that sort of stuff. But you see, because I've felt like that, I, I would never. You start somewhere, and I'm nowhere near where I would I would want to be either. But it's I I don't know. I think it's just if you're like one of these big guys, it's just uh, I don't know. I I, I don't know. The majority of them wouldn't like, laugh at you or wouldn't wouldn't try and di- yeah. discourage you or whatever. It's just you know, so you get dicks anywhere you go, you know. But I like I don't know. I don't trust myself to start working out because like I fall off the wagon so easy with things, mm. man. And, like if I was to try and gain weight to turn it into muscle, mm. like the I would definitely fall off at some point and just be just gain the weight. Guy. <laughs> and like my, my weight goes up and down like so quickly man like mm. within like three to four days of eating shit like mm. i can see a physical difference like in my face and my body and all that mm. so like what i do is is just i go for like really long walks man mm-hmm. like that's just what i, I do for exercise yeah um, and it seems to work <laughs> lucky you that's that's it i wish i could i wish i was one of those people that were like that I could just, because I'm having to get like so many calories in per day just to 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 gain weight and then and that obviously turn that into muscle. But I, I'd, to be fair, like I, over the years, I I played badminton as a junior, so I've I've always done sport and I've always been relatively physically fit. Um, but I do think that that was one of the big reasons why I didn't gain weight. So much because I was constantly doing a lot of cardio stuff that that was just like wasn't getting enough calories in and wasn't um and was doing so much running about and, and all that sort of side of things that I just found it impossible to gain weight. And then if you're on like a calorie if you're burning more than, than you're sort of taking in, it's just I felt I, I was looking unhealthy, I just felt unhealthy. There's times where I'd feel like I was literally I'd go out busking during the day and I wouldn't eat in the morning because yeah, and I rushed to go and get a picture or whatever, so I'd, I'd run out and then I'd be there for like five, five to five, six o'clock and I'll realise I've no eight and then I'm getting <laughs> lightheaded and, and I like, feel terrible. Uh, and that was a, like a daily occurrence. So that's like another way that the, the pandemic and stuff has just pure helped me. I think like gigging in general is a, like a big factor in working out. Like I've had to, I've had to like sp- specify a certain amount of time each day to go for a walk because mm-hmm. i'm not gigging man like yep. the, the amount of fucking calories i must have burnt doing like three four gigs over over the weekend it's mm-hmm. crazy because mm-hmm. you're just on your feet all night man carrying heavy fucking equipment yeah yep. it's nuts i miss it me big too <laughs> i miss <laughs> it big time yeah um i i, I I was thinking earlier on, just talking to a pal about uh, festivals and stuff coming back, and I don't know. Did you did you do many like festivals? I never. I was never really. Um, not as like Crashton. I've done mm. festivals and stuff as like for yeah. the arts, but I mean none of the big ones. Like mm-hmm. none of well the ones here anyway. Like mm-hmm. didn't do like Tea in the Park or didn't do Red in the Leeds or Glastonbury mm-hmm. or anything like that, man. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done did you do did you do I, Tea in the Park when it was going no 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 I no? wish I did I wish I did I did go to Tea in the Park like as Is a, it as a no I never done any I did go huh? like I've, I've been to them just as yeah. like a uh, as a, a audience member but um, I don't know like I've I've thought a lot about festivals and stuff and I actually think some, sometimes I wonder like see the kind of stuff that I do it's not really festival stuff. There's 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 people like um like I seen uh, Gabriel Applin, the, the singer, and she played a festival and obviously with the band and stuff it makes a huge difference, but a lot of her stuff's quite mellow as well, you know. So it, it, sometimes I do wonder when I'm actually at a festival or I think, I think I uh, Gabriel Applin's like at least her last two albums have been a bit more like Poppy, and that probably yeah. for that reason. Mm. She was the last artist that uh, me and Katie seen before the pandemic. Me too. Me Were too. you fucking St. Luke? Oh, yeah, St. Luke's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. I was there, yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> fucking I, great gig, man. So you, you would have seen brilliant. Nick Wilson and what was the other yep. girl? Um, uh, Emily Burns. Emily Burns, yeah. Emily she Burns. seems to be doing quite well just now. She got a song out with JP Cooper, I think. 
That's right, it? man. Yeah. Um, um, but I, I see. I, I, that was the last mental. That was the last gig that I seen. Um, that I'm was in on a year ago as well. Yeah. But it was I February the end of, end of February or something like that was so it might yeah. have been or was it March? Can't even remember. I can't remember, man. Um, but I like that kind of thing. You remember with, with, with the band and stuff like that. Like it was a great gig. There was a lot of these songs are mellow, but they're they're or like they're they're quite. People say to me a lot of the time like your music's dead sad. It's depressing and so that sort of stuff. And I think well, I that's because I've not got a band that can't like the, the dynamics of of a song like the. The different, um, I like the dynamics. It, it makes a big difference with a band uh, rather than you sitting. You see Gabriel Applin sit and play the piano to a song; it'll sound, yeah, down mellow, and you know. But I was going to say that. Like, I think she, um, I think even the pop, poppy stuff, she still writes from the same place that she would usually write her other stuff. But mm -hmm. it's just to do with the production. Like I think she's just like approached different producers, and yeah. um, there's a song she she has like. That's on that album she just put out. Mm -hmm. Maybe stay or something. Is it stay? Or oh, that was that was like an EP before the album. But stay right. is a great song. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you yeah. see her playing that acoustic, and it sounds yeah. beautiful. And you mm -hmm. see it in like a live um, situation. Like it, it just sounds fucking mm -hmm. massive. Yeah. I think like what you're doing just now is basically like what. James Bay done and fucking Lewis Capaldi done and Ed Sheeran done until, well, Ed Sheeran's different because he uses the loop mm -hmm. station and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you're ever in a situation where you need to have, like, there needs to be just more there, like, you need a, a band, you can always just hire, like, session musicians to do, like, a festival or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're suited for that environment. Like, James Bay fucking toured for years just on his own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know I mean, and the guitar. I have I have used session musicians like a, a, a few times and the only issue that I have is like if I'm if I'm playing something and I'm making money for, for the gig or whatever and then I've got to like uh hire these people to play. Um mm -hmm. it's I've got to like make sure that I'm I'm actually able to pay them. <laughs> you know, I can't yeah. I can't just have them there and they be like oh, shit, I've no I can't afford it, you know. So I've got to it's not something, if, if I could do that all the time, I would, uh, but it's just... Do you think maybe, like, that's why there's maybe value in, in the songs that you're putting out, like, have, have a full production in the songs, so that when people come and see you acoustic, they know that, right, that's those tracks, but this is, like, acoustic versions of them, and then when you have the opportunity to play those songs with a band, when it's worth paying them and you've got enough money to pay them, mm -hmm. or, like, the the actual like gig you're doing mm -hmm. is worthwhile dig digging into your pocket to pay guys you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. it makes sense because it's the, the original record was like that like i don't know if you have since went and listened to nick wilson like, after the gabriel Appen gig i've listened to to a fair bit there was a guy uh there was a guy sonny as well that's on the same label um if he right. yeah i listened to a lot of that but nick nick's quite acoustic isn't he live but yeah, yeah. When he played that gig, it was just him and the guitar man, and yeah. then we bought the EP, and it's like there's a massive production on it, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. funky stuff on it, man. It's cool. Mm -hmm. um, I I like the acoustic stuff, but like I, I like it, like yeah. I enjoy, and I enjoy seeing that live. I think if I was to go and see like Kings of Leon or something like that, like I would be quite gutted if it wasn't if it was like a full acoustic set unless it was like that was the kind of thing you know but yeah. but for that kind of like in a place like st luke's or um like these kind of beautiful venues the acoustic stuff just le lends itself so well to that that thing you know mm -hmm. um two seconds right two seconds yeah, cool. cheers cheers right i'm gonna i'm gonna move them just because all cool, no right oh, no, he's going upstairs no, you cool. That's uh, all right. Sorry, cut that. That <laughs> yeah, right there. Um, but I there's there's another guy on their label as well uh, on Gabriel Arpin's label. His name's Sonny. Uh, that's his like his stage name, but I don't know if it's his actual name. But uh, Sonny, and he he's got a phenomenal voice. Um, and I remember seeing because I went to see her in Orin Moore in two thousand seventeen or something. I think it was a couple of years ago. Um. 
And I remember this guy standing on, like, playing on the stage. It was a support, you know, like people are filtering in and in and out during that that point in time. Uh, and I remember just thinking, this guy is amazing, like amazing voice, amazing songs, um, and nobody was listening. And I re- I remember just sitting there, like standing, just getting angry and and angrier. Yeah. Because I was, I think, because I was like kind of remembering, like it was. It was in my mind of me standing up on stage and nobody listening. There's been a fair few times where I've wanted to say, like, "Gonna shut up if you don't want to listen." I know you can't say that when you're on stage, but if you don't want, if you don't want to listen, there's like a bar away out there, like leave, you know. And I yeah. just, I, I was getting frustrated for him. And um, that's going on, man. Mm-hmm. I used to do like an acoustic night, like just attend an acoustic night when I was like first kind of like learning how to write songs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like there was maybe like fifty people would go along, and the guy who ran it, like, like you would go up and start playing songs. I think you got like three songs each, mm-hmm. and um, you would start singing and you, like that. You'd start hearing voices like talking through the audience and stuff. And he would come up and he'd be like, "Like everybody, shut the fuck up! Like this is like everybody's opportunity to actually perform in front of an audience. Like you're mm-hmm. here. Like the whole point in this night is that there's fucking live music. Like." Mm-hmm. So fuck off! Like there is a mm-hmm. separate room for a bar. So go into the bar if you want to mm-hmm. have a conversation. That's so f- that's fair enough. I think yeah. I, I actually there's been a f- I remember I played. Um, I remember before a gig I was playing and I was saying and I was getting really I was getting pissed off before I'd even started. <laughs> so that was kind of like I just I can't even remember what one it was, but I think I just had like a kind of feeling of, I don't know if this is the right crowd for me, for my kind of music. Um, and I remember just saying, I think it was to my mum actually, but before I left, I was like, I'm just going to say, like t- today, if, if people are just talking all through my set, I'm just going to say, going to shut up. And if, if you want to <laughs> leave, but it's the feeling that when you're on stage, because you, you don't want to get the crowd on your back as well. Like that would yeah. just make the stage feel even smaller, you know, when people are, are talking and, um, yeah. but I just, I've been tempted many times, many times, and I, I, I've done a, like a few passive aggressive things, but I've never actually said, like, when he, when he shut up. Aye. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, I think like you can still have a big production, like make have it sounding big, but still mm. acoustic. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yep. Um, like, funnily enough, like, Kings of Leon, when they do, like, ballads and stuff, mm-hmm. I think they do a great job of it, like, of st- still making it sound fucking huge, but it's got, yep. like, a really beautiful side to it. Mm-hmm. Like, who else are good examples of that, man? M- Mumford, in a sense. They're, Mumford, like, so, a, a lot of the time, I know it's, like, a big band and stuff, but a lot of the time their music is, like, it's just like beautiful songs, and then they're just they're made massive. But I do, I, I actually do feel like I'm totally like I love the acoustic stuff, but I feel also that I just I want away from it sometimes. Like, I want away from that. I love playing live, I love doing the acoustic stuff, and I, I would always want to st- sit on stage with a piano or a guitar or whatever and play like an acoustic version. I, I get a lot of satisfaction for doing that and just like t- focusing on like the words and whatever, but. I do feel like it's time to take a step up and to to see if it, see if this was like 2013 when like that whole acoustic thing was just massive and like everyone in their grand had an, a, an acoustic guitar and they were just like <laughs> like Lucy Rose and uh, like Passenger and all the all the, the names yeah. you know um, and it was just such a big thing. Now it's kind of like this whole synthy pop thing is really big just now and everyone's doing that you know I think it's just like waves that happen um, yeah. and I just I do feel like it's just time to, to get away from that to a point because um, you just you don't want to be like you, do, you just don't want to be stuck in the same box like or an acoustic artist when really yeah. I don't feel like that but the only reason that is is because I've not got the resource, resources to, to to do other things yeah it is difficult, man. I think like it's, it's hard because you want to be like moving towards something, but you also don't want to you don't want to be try to like you don't want to try and like base yourself too much on everything else that's 
going on mm-hmm. in the industry yep. as well. Because mm-hmm. like, when the new artist comes out, you start like writing to suit that kind of style of music. By the time you put your shit out, the next new things came out. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So it's, yep. I think it's more about trying to just be influenced and and take what you can from like those things. But like mm-hmm. we uh, we started talking recently, like online because of like the post you put up about that article was it the Aye. sun or something? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah and one of the things that we were like talking about like back and forth was like how how like v- valuable it is now that you can have a niche and mm-hmm. still be really successful within that niche without appealing to like the fucking industry as like a, as a fucking whole do you know what i mean yeah i think like if you if you don't think about it too much in that way Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think you're. I think you're right in in the sense of like, if I'm going to be playing a music festival, I want the I want the environment to be the best that it possibly can be. Like that to me isn't like restructuring that environment isn't the same as going. Um, I should be writing this kind of style yep. of music because that isn't what's preferable. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I think you should stay true to who you are, and you've done mm-hmm. really well so far by doing that. You know what I mean? I. I, I think like I don't think I could be like that. Like I, I don't I don't think I could just say like when a, a new wave comes around that or whatever that I could say oh, I'm gonna go and write in that style because I always end up coming back to like an example, um I've got a song that I'm recording uh this Saturday coming actually. Um and I'm recording that and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be like a bit more commercial in terms of like it would be more appeal it would appeal more to, to a wider sort of range of people than than like than a lot of my other stuff um but i i was writing the other day and i just felt like i, I seem to go back to this sort of scottish like not scottish uh, this sort of like folky um mellow mellow kind of style and and it's really easy for me to write in that that vein and sometimes i do sit and wonder I think like what am I doing because I feel like this is my this is what I'm best at and I'm I'm trying to it's it's really hard to find your place like what yeah. is right because you just go you go in and out all the time you think I really like I don't sit and listen to uh, folk music all the time I, I listen to a lot of pop a lot of rock a lot of different things so I'm influenced by so many different things and it's Sometimes it just feels like you're... Yeah, it's just about find, find the right producer, though. That's mm-hmm. someone that's going to be able to match that with, with like, a modern production mm-hmm. without, like, without like fucking drifting away too far from your roots. Mm-hmm. Like, not so much Ed Sheeran, like, now, or, the, or at least the past couple of albums he put out, but when he was, at like, now when he, like, first fucking broke, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, just huge worldwide... Like maybe Divide was the album. Like I think he managed to incorporate so many modern themes in that album, as well as like staying true to the, the sort of like f- you're saying like folk yep. side of his writing. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, he's got the whole fucking rapping thing too, so it's it's slightly different. But you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like incorporating like a kind of modern production in what you do. There's mm-hmm. definitely a way to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's just difficult. It's really it's really difficult to. Um, I'm going to take these <laughs> phones out. Phone's going to out of battery. Um, it's just difficult to. It's like I think we spoke before about you're you're going into the studio or whatever, and you've got a certain amount of time. So it's really hard to. It's, it's, if you've not got like a total um, grip to of production yourself, uh, and you're trying to like make demos and things, it's really really difficult to. To get a demo made, or to to really own, hone in on your on your sound, when you've not got the budget to to stay there for yeah. longer, you know. So, and that was an absolute uh, point and and thing that I'm making of when I'm in this this time. Um, I'm not releasing anything until I'm 100% happy with it, or, yeah. or at least at least I know you'll never be 100% happy with something usually, but. I want to be happy with it enough so that I can get behind it when I'm when I'm promoting it. Um, and if it's going to cost me more money in the long run, then I'm prepared to do that because 
what is the point of me constantly releasing things that I'm not like I'm I'm kind of impartial about. Like I could hear something I would or I would think I really wish I could have redone that or changed this or changed that and then I'm promoting it and trying to sell it to people and I don't even like it that much. Yeah. Um so that was like that's a, a major thing that I'm I'm gonna be doing um this time and, and if it's gonna if it means I release two things in a year and I take months to, to get it right then I, I'm I'm gonna but I wanted to ask you as well. I wanted to ask you about the. What do you think? Because again, I've I've so I've been doing this for. I would say I've been releasing and and playing like steadily since two thousand fifteen or so. Um, feels longer, but now it's been like five six years. Um, and does it? Do you think like the Samas, the Scottish, the Music Awards or whatever it's called? Uh-huh. Um, and I always see these like lists of things that are like best song or best this or that. And I always think, how the fuck do people get put on? Like, where you, yeah. I never hear anything about it. I never, I never, would never even know how to contact them. Or I think there is a voting process with that. Um, mm. I th- I'm a wee bit not like too close. I, ju- I just know I know Richie, the guy that like puts the thing together. Mm. So I think. Maybe I'm just more aware of how that whole process works. Mm. But I, I get, I get what you mean, man. Like, I, like I've never, I've never been a part of it, but then mm-hmm. I've never submitted and and yep. do you know I mean? got people to vote. But mm-hmm. I also am aware that there's other things like the Sam is out there, and I, I don't know how they work. And mm-hmm. I've always wondered, well, how did that guy fucking win an award? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not yeah. even, it's not even fair place of like. It's just genuine confusion a lot of the time because I think with the Scottish music scene, like we always, I've done a few different things or like spoken in a, a few different things, and I've always said like the generic kind of the expected answer where I'm like, oh, it's very inclusive and everyone's friends with everyone and all that sort of stuff, and that's bullshit. Like I, I don't believe that that's, I don't believe that that's actually true, and it's I say it because. Like maybe compared to other places, like we're all kind of like I'm willing to help if somebody that comes to me and asks me for something, or like about, for example, the grant, like for the 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 funding uh, for the COVID thing. I know that they've got a certain budget, and I know that more people that are getting it, are, it's going to go down. But if if someone if someone messages me and asks me like how you how you go about filling it in or whatever, I'm not going to hold that back or try and withhold, you know. Yeah. Um, but I do find like there's a lot of different like the Scottish playlists and things like that that I've I always think well like how 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 do you get in it like there, I've got friends that, that have never been in it that are that are really good um, and I again just, I think it's just about like how let me give you an example right so there's mm-hmm. like before when I was in Forest and Hearts mm-hmm. I. Uh, well, even before Flores and Arts, I was in like maybe three fucking bands that I'd gigged with, like, and had never played King Touch. Mm-hmm. And I had it in my head that, like, a fucking BF and the people that, like, run King Touch are just so biased about the bands that they want to put mm. on their stage. Yep. And they don't want anything to do with bands that are, like, fucking play rock music. And uh, we, we just get dumped with the fucking cat house promoters and the fucking whatever other venues for were being offered at that time, right? And then, like, I, I put together Fluorescent Hearts with, like, the drummer that I'd always played with, and we really, mm. like, honed our craft and spent time reaching out to these promoters and making friends with them, making friends within, like, the 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 local scene, like, the other bands that were yep. some more things, that, that, bands that were doing things that we wanted to be doing. And then... Um, one of those bands was like the Daikinis, like they they were yeah. they yeah. were like the, a fucking prodigy of King Tut's. Basically, they were the first band to be signed by the King Tut's label. Right. I remember before I was even like friends with them, being pure jealous of their success and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have, we finally got our first King Tut's gig, and we put the effort in and s- sold all the fucking tickets, and then we ended up with a good relationship with King Tots and that whole process like proved to me that 
th- there was a sort of like responsibility on me, you know what I mean? To like, like what? Why would like guys that are just promoters that just want to that are trying to like put gigs on? Why yeah. would book a band who are trying to build a fan base that don't have a fan base? Yeah, and, and like for me at the time, like. I was playing fucking really mediocre music, you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't all the success of Florescent Arts that I had a bit of perspective. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that in any sense about yourself, man, but I no, think... No, I, I, I... Yeah. yeah what I, I think is yeah. important is, like, to look at the the steps that you have taken. Like, you have played King Tuts and you have dipped mm-hmm. your, your toe in, like, these these places, like, playing with fucking Nina Nesbitt and... Mm-hmm. Recording at Abbey Road and all of that shit, like you've, yeah. got, you've got like a lot of fucking great things on your resume. I think it's just again, like going back to that original point that we were talking about on Facebook, is just about how do you turn that into like your thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than like the the end, like because I think like when you start looking at the industry as being separate from what you're already doing, mm-hmm. then, like it's a losing game. You know what I mean? And I, like, I, yeah. I, I still get in my head about shit like that. Like, mm-hmm. Even just wanting to, wanting to be a, a songwriter for other artists, I think, like, oh, how do I get into those things? And then you forget mm-hmm. that, like, oh, well, maybe I need to make, like, a team of people that write songs and then we reach out to other mm-hmm. artists. You know what I mean? And, like, I, I, I do agree with that, but then also, like, where do you, where do you contact? Like, where do you... I think which stuck in my throat, and I hate, because I'm not I'm not like a bit, I've never been a bitter person and I always, and I actually agree, like, and the, I, I've said many times um, that, and I'm not saying that you were saying this, but I'm just saying I, I've said many times that when I release things a, a lot in the past, I've thought about just ripping them for Spotify and just starting afresh because I'm not, like, yeah. I, I had a conversation with another pal that's a musician and I said, See if I'm being a hundred percent honest with myself. There's not one thing um, that I've released that I think deserves to to do really well. Um, and it took like a wait. Although I always deep deep down like could feel that and and felt like I've I've rushed everything. I, I rushed a lot of stuff for no reason because I've I've not got anyone telling me like you need to get this finished for such and such a date. You know, um, so. With the exception to the last thing that I released, um, for what it was, I think it was I'm pretty I'm happy with it, uh, and uh, but the the thing that confuses me just a lot about the playlists and things on Spotify is that when you look at the list, a lot of them do seem to be friends with each other and they're they're all in this kind of bubble yeah. that not in a bit of it I've just never been a part of I've never been able to get into that sort of group of them and I don't even know if I really want to. Like to be honest, because I'm not, I don't feel like I'm. I'm. It doesn't matter to me if I'm releasing, if I'm recording and putting music out there. It it really doesn't make a difference to me being in that group or not. Yeah. Um, the, the I think the issue that I've always had about it, um, like the last single that I put out, it was BBC introducing song of the week, and so I had a bit of like, like. What what would you call that? Like, um, like I thought it was a beautiful. I I, I did. Th- I never wrote wrote the words for this one. It was something that I'd been asked to do, um, and I thought it was a beautiful song, uh, and it had some attention from a like, validation in a, in a way that you know that doesn't matter whether it has or, or not. But it it had some validation, and I just think, like, how do you go about? Like, how do they? How do they not see that? Or how do they not see like they should surely they're checking up on like BBC introducing they're checking up all these different things and and it's just really uh, it's just really difficult to, to try and get on. We've had this conversation with me, I've had this conversation with a lot of other singers and musicians that are in the same so think the same as me, but there's no way to say it without coming across as just bitter, you know. But it's not it doesn't come from a place here, it's a genuine question. The the hardest thing is like when you start getting like like little glimpses of like success mm-hmm. and trying to like make that snowball, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that what that like maybe what lacks 
now, unless you're doing like the, the thing that we were talking about before about having like a an online presence where you like just solely focus on your niche. Mm-hmm. I th- that this is where I think that like a band manager or an artist manager is like so important because the responsibility isn't on those guys that are putting you on a playlist in Radio One or or like the the fucking the, the label scout that's listening to your song on the radio mm-hmm. to contact you because they they like your song like sometimes liking your song isn't enough mm-hmm. and I think like there's it's good to have like a manager because the responsibility is actually on that person because it's so hard as an artist to be to like like you said it's so hard to be like a fucking business guy mm-hmm. and a singer in the in the same fucking day do you know what I mean yeah. Uh, but I think like having a, a good manager who is able to approach all these people that like like because most artists are fucking like loners that just want to sit in the room and, and make music. Yeah. And, and, and you, in fact, you'll find like a lot of those people that end up appearing in like the Scottish Sun and stuff like that are involved in those those groups of people that like you're like how did they end up in that group mm-hmm. and i don't particularly want to be a part of it but how did they fucking end up all know each other but it's because mm-hmm. they're all facing the same thing and probably the reason you're not in that group is because your your actual moral values are, are like different mm-hmm. from yours you know what i mean I agree, isn't, yeah. one isn't like isn't like valid or anything it just happens to be that you you don't want to like don't want to like sacrifice your integrity for vanity mm. or something. Do you know what I mean? I I feel like I could. There's there's things, and I'm not saying this as if like it's over by any means. Like I'm 26, and I'm still releasing and recording and all that sort of stuff. It's not. I don't mean that. But I I think like if I had wanted to to sort of try and be more like. I don't even know the word respect, respected or, or like noticed or whatever. And and with among other artists, I don't like. There's like you said the Abbey Road thing and all that. I've had I've had things that I'm really proud of and that I that I feel like I've deserved at different at one time or another. You know, I I put a lot of time into what I'm doing and stuff. I, I do rush things, obviously, but. I do feel like I deserved a lot of the opportunities. I was trying to take those opportunities and really like build a momentum from them. Um, but I do feel if I had really wanted to get into that group where I want to like suck up everyone's arse, and I, I don't care what anyone says, that is a that is a factor. And and yeah. any job or anything, not just music, like whatever you choose to get in. And I don't. I think sometimes I need to learn to play the game a bit more. Um, I've been told that for since I started. You, you've got to play the game. You've got to be more gushy and more yeah. like. And I just, I'm very approachable. I'm very uh, quite confident and and happy to speak to anyone. I rarely have arguments or anything like that. But I've just never been like a suck up, and I find that very hard to to get into that frame of mind. Um, and yeah, some people are just better at playing the game, I suppose. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Because you need to work out like what your what your sacrifices are gonna be in like in your career. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like are you willing to like I don't know, like you know, like an example would be like a vegan artist like having their song in like a fucking like bird's eye. Advert or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what, what are you willing to sacrifice to like push your your art out there, man? And yeah. I always say, like, I would sell my soul to, like, as a <laughs> as a joke, but really, when I dial dial it in, like, I, I wouldn't. I I I do have yeah. certain things that I'm I'm just I wouldn't be willing to do, and it's not like that. That could be that could sacrifice any opportunity of me doing. But, it's important to say as well. I, I do um, like I just want to be able to tour and make a living and and have a core group of people that that appreciate and and take something from what I'm doing and that and I'm happy. Um, I want to be just live cut like I don't want to be in debt and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, but just it's not about being like this big um, like singer, musician, yeah. whatever. Um, so it's important to say that, like I've not got 
my head isn't in the clouds where I'm like, yeah, I just want to be this big, massive superstar, whatever. Um, but I, I, I do think like there's things that I'm just I wouldn't be willing to to do, and it's more just like of a moral thing. It's a, a I've never been brought up to be someone that's like that's false, and I think a lot that like I said, yeah, like, old, man, like I I grew up not even just growing up, but in fluorescent hearts. Like my whole my whole objective was to be a famous singer. You know what I mean? And like just through through fucking like through bad shit that happened with, with the band and the fucking label that we were on and stuff we never we never got there but like like i was saying earlier about that snowballing effect like we were in the middle of this big like it was all happening man like yeah. we were talking to all the, the big labels and stuff and it was about to fucking happen and it just kind of fell apart but at this point in my life like i've never been so grateful that it did because mm. I, I was willing to sacrifice every single moral part of yeah. like who i am man. and yeah. like i was always chasing like i don't know like there's how many artists are out there that are like that are saying things politically that they would have never agreed with just if there was still a guy that was do working construction or fucking yeah. In the factory or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, I I just, just think about that sometimes. Like I, I've managed to like become a better, have a better world view. I think mm -hmm. just because I'm not a fucking famous musician. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, but I totally understand you like saying that, and because maybe I think I've always struggled to to play the game. But I think like the older that you get as well, and you're just you maybe get a bit more perspective on things, and I think. I understand people that, that would do anything because I understand how much you want it and how much you just want that. I don't know, some people it's about like being famous and, and just having this like, like, like lifestyle and stuff like that, but really, I think like, you've got to... Look, look, for me, it's always just been about I just want to play like these like nice venues and just and tour and stuff like that. I do understand how much people want it, and I understand why people. It's like going on these shows or going on different things because they just you're willing to do anything to to get there. Um, I had even even when I had, was doing the Abbey Road thing, I remember speaking to a producer and I, I I won the competition and I was speaking to I'd done a performance and I was standing having a conversation with a producer and I just remember like at my side looking looking at my side and just seeing like about 10 or 10 different singer songwriters just standing waiting for me to finish so that they could like edge in and take over for the conversation <laughs> and I remember thinking like this like it's just ridiculous like, you can't they're not they're, they would be willing to to say whatever, do whatever, just to get yeah. that chat. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that, but I just have noticed a lot of the time it's like you'll be at these events and stuff and it's just that gushy... Um, yeah, and the lurkers. Aye, the lurkers. <laughs> people that are just like, lurking about for the the thing. Some people make it like that, man. But mm -hmm. again, I, I think that like when you do that, you end up positioning yourself in the industry like in a place where you're dependent on everybody that's around you and not the, the opposite. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to be in a position where people are, are dependent on you or at least the only person you're dependent on is yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, it's, hard to, it's hard to even t touch on a lot of this stuff because it does, like, if I was 20 years older, I'd just be called, like, a better old man. You know, no. like, I'd just be... I'd just, and, I, and I do get it and a, a lot of the time i'm not saying this from like well sometimes it is frustration because it's just you're trying to figure out what it is that you need to do because i it's just, sometimes you're, it's just like a stab in the dark a lot of the time with releasing and, and doing all that stuff yeah um, and it does sound better and i've spoke to loads of other musicians that feel the same i think it's just it's really difficult to speak about because nobody really knows unless you're a musician yourself what you're going, what what you have to do, or what your the experiences you have doing what you're doing every day, doing this every day, um, 
it's just like an outside looking in a lot of the time. They don't see all the emails and all the, the no, like no replies that you get and and all that. Or like the the even just when it comes down to people like if you're busking or something and like and just the total uh, disregard to what you're doing a lot of the time. Or the oh, it's at least you're doing something, son. At least you're doing something. Or like you know those sort of comments. You just You've got to be a particular kind of person mentally, I think, to even contemplate doing music as I do. Aye, the rejection's like fucking is what builds your thick skin, I think. Mm-hmm. We are done, mm-hmm. and like you just get used to people saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I never get used to it. I don't think I think I'm always like I still always um it's hard to it's hard to not get disappointed. Like I I Recently, just been given. I can't, I can't even say. I don't even know if I mentioned it when we spoke, but I, I was given like an opportunity by. I get a random email and a random mail on Instagram in like December, like the most bizarre thing, um, and I I remember looking on the, the Instagram and seeing like they were verified and all that sort of stuff, and I was thinking, am I being banned up here or is this like, is this for real? Um, <laughs> And basically, apparently, they've been they they they've been. I'll tell you after because I don't want to. Yeah, yeah cool. Sorry. I don't know if I did already tell you. I don't know. I think so, man. All right, so it's like a big, big um, designer, like a fashion designer thing, and apparently they listen to my my stuff, my videos, and YouTube and all that sort of stuff in the studio a lot. Um, and it was basically they want me to, so they'll get like people to see for like fashion week and all that sort of stuff. They'll get like their, their shows and stuff, and they want um they would get like a singer or whatever. And with COVID, that's not able to happen. Um, but they basically they said we would love to work with you such and such a, a time when you were able to. Um, and I even even after that, I was like, it's just it's a bit Maybe. weird. This. I, I wasn't sure and then I get a mail again recently um, that they're creating like a a film thing and they're wanting to, to have music provided for the, the film that's going to be distributed out to, to such so they want me to do like a cover um, of like a classic I think it'll be like a classic song that I would release so they, they want me to do it in a, in a way where it's like really atmospheric haunting uh, sound like take a big song and you know like John Lewis all that sort of stuff that yeah um, and I remember like the day before I got that mail and I'd heard I'd heard um, obviously heard to this guy and and uh, this company in December and then it just I hadn't heard anything else and I'd get the odd like like in a video or whatever so I thought I don't know if this is uh, I don't want to be a pest and I think that's a problem that a lot of people have as well. Like they don't yeah, want to be reaching out again or trying to create like be a pain in the arse, basically. Um and the day before I was like, Oh, this is I just feel pure doubt. I, I just feel like there's nothing going on, there's just nothing happening. And how do I try how do I keep like posting videos and posting stuff when I just feel like what's the point a lot of the time? And then I get this mail the next day and I thought, like, you go for it there. To there, to there, to there, all the time, day to day. Um, I've kind of got used to that feeling, man. And I think what I try to do now with like crashing is just, <laughs> it's really, it's really fucking like quite selfish actually. But like, I only, I know I only do those things. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I've just got <laughs> got to a point where like. If somebody wants me to go and play a charity show, and the the gig is losing money, yep, and the charity is not receiving any money, yeah, I won't do those gigs anymore. No. If somebody wants me to turn up and open some acoustic night that they're putting on for their college, mm-hmm. and it's just about a bunch of their pals that are there, and nobody sold tickets, like I'm not doing those gigs anymore. You know what I mean? No. Like I've I've served my time. <laughs> with that. So the, only, the only things that I fucking <laughs> it's, it's so stupid, man. Because like th- those things barely come. Money is one thing, but like yeah. the kind of things that I'll do don't come around very often. Mm. So like the fucking wait, 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 <laughs> the fucking right. great thing. Like it's very rarely that you you're going to get a fucking message for like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It yeah. is. You know what I mean? But I, 
I don't know. I just don't see the point. And for me, you know, I mean, it's not worthwhile because I've got a fucking family and stuff, and I've got mm. stuff that I'm committed to that I'm like, I can have fun with it. I think because see, because I gave up trying to chase that thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you should or or that you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I I just gave it up because. I don't know, there's just uh, like loads of fucking factors, man, but it's put, put me in a good position because when I get to do go and do those things, it's like the best fucking thing that it possibly could be and I have a lot of fun doing it and yeah. I'm not trying to um, like appeal to people. It was something that I used to get fucking freaked out about was like, like we would get, we had to get like a big following for like the kind of for a local band anyway, and mm-hmm. like really fucking fanatical fans. And I, I would just get freaked out in that whole fucking process because I started seeing that like that 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 whole thing starts to be- manipulate who you are and the things that you'll say because you start getting caught up in right like, with they are I'm just a wee dick for fucking Cumbernauld. <laughs> you know what I mean? That like yep. has been spending the whole journey down here. Like mm-hmm. to fucking whatever city it is in England, talking about dicks with my friends. <laughs> you know, like, now, like a bunch of people are like fucking, like, oh my god, like you're yeah. and like blah blah blah, and they're saying all this shit, and then you start to get this feeling of like, oh well, maybe I am that fucking thing that they're talking mm-hmm. about. You know what I mean? And it's that's a weird dynamic. It's mm-hmm. a very weird dynamic where you have to like a lot of the, these people are. I, I, I even I feel I feel weird. And you maybe feel the same. Like I feel very weird to call people fans, right? But they're fans of your music, and they're not necessarily friends that you know. So what else would you say, like supporters? Yeah. You know, uh, and I find it very weird. But a lot of the times, like they they take a lot of things. That, like I could say something to my pals, and they'd be like, "Shut up!" Or they they don't care at all. And I could say something, and it's just a weird dynamic. It's a weird dynamic where like people that aren't uh, cheers. Please, uh, it's a weird dynamic with people that aren't your um, your friends that are, sort of hold you in like a higher light than yeah, than, like your friends and that do you know? And it's yeah, maybe like, maybe that's, that's like an oversight from me that those people weren't doing that. But I, what I seen in that whole situation was the birth of like, and I, I by no means comparing. Or, or even saying that I could have been in anybody like fucking Justin Bieber or, or that mm. kind of artist, you know what I mean? Like, not necessarily saying that he's fucking credible either, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like that level yeah. of success. Like, you can see in those moments how that stuff starts to happen. Like, mm. how much do you think, like, how much do you think that guy has fucking sacrificed? Like, he's he's like, He's almost not even a person anymore. You know what I mean? Like he's, mm-hmm. he's like a thing that, like the name Justin Bieber is not just a person. It's like this whole fucking concept. Brand, of, uh-huh. I like not even even just a brand though, but like like a fucking like a cultural fucking concept. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And but if yeah. he hadn't had that, and you bumped into him in a shop, like he he wouldn't be the same person, but he would be the, the same fucking. Anatomic human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the only difference is those people that fucking validate them and give them reason to feel the mm-hmm. status that he has, man. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I'm just so grateful man, that I never got to have that because yeah. I don't know. I'm a bit fucking face down in a pile of sex on I, go- <laughs> I, <was gonna> <laughs> I know sometimes that worries me about myself as well because I know my per- like personality and I. But I think that's that's another reason why I've always been quite uh, like I would never. It goes back to the suck up thing, or like the, the sort of you're willing to suck up anyone's else because I've got this like status, and it's not a, it's not like me just. I think I'm like above that, you know. I, I understand like if you meet somebody that's if I was to meet Gabriel Applin or something like that, I'd be probably going to myself a wee bit because because I do like I value it, but I, I've. I've I feel like people with, with an ego, I hate to to feed into that like more and to really because see at the end of the day we're all people we're all like we're the same. Where there's no, I know other people have got different opportunities or different like 
experiences in life and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we're, we're all people. It doesn't make a difference whether you've played like the Hydro or Madison Square Gardens or whatever. You're not any better. Um, and I think something, it's just that that's the weird dynamic about like celebrity kind of culture and stuff like that. It's like, why do, because they've got money and they can get like other photos, pure mega airbrushed and, and they're like, they're still just people. It's mental. I, and I, that sort of thing just annoys me just now with like social media and like Kardashians and all the, these different things that people put so much stock into these like influencers and, and people that are just portraying like a, a false like I find that really because I'm an influencer now so am I actually I'm an influencer yeah same man uh, <laughs> what do you influence just like just like being better than most people do you know what I mean me too like Thanks. Just like, like I'm actually working towards a, a cultural wave. You know what I mean? Right. Of Is like, it a, uh, a vibe. I kind of man, kind of like a, I kind of like a vibe. You know, like you walk in a room, and there's just like a vibe. Mm. Like I'm trying to like sell that. I'm trying I, to like bottle that. You know bottle I mean? that and just sell that to other people. Like that. No, I do get it. I do get it. Um, I'm, I'm quite. I'm, I, I'm. Would say I'm a bit of an influencer myself, actually, cool. uh, because I've noticed that a lot of them are doing like this thing where so they'll match like the workout gear with like the mats, the workout mats. So they'll have like the same color mat. So I'll take pictures of me with, with my mat and my same color t-shirt and stuff like that. Cool. I just think it's really important to put that out into the the world, you know. Um, I think it's important that you do that as well, man. To to buy the same. Um, Matching that, you know. Yeah. I, I, in seriousness, like it is just the most like vapid, <laughs> ridiculous thing. And I look at something and I just like. I think the whole Black Lives Matter thing has completely destroyed the concept of an influencer. Like, How do you like, mean? like, did you not see like any of the, the like people that were faking pictures? So they were like pretending that they were helping, like re, like like fucking helping shopkeepers and stuff like mm. board up the windows and stuff during the, the riots and stuff and Aye. pretending to be at protest but they were actually just like fucking staging you know what I mean there's like videos of people like can I borrow your fucking like what's yep. it called your fucking what's that called like when you've got a fucking board with something oh, placard thing like that uh, like, can I borrow that for a minute and they pose for a picture and then walk off Aye, that, is, that is pure like low that is yeah. so low. I've seen them like I've seen them hire out uh, studios that are like pretending they're on private jets, and it's like a yeah. it's like a studio that's got like a <laughs> it's like being created to look like a private jet in, the, in that part, and then you look and it's it's like an actual studio. It's mental, and it's just pe- they, people. I, I, I don't want to say that they, they need, but well, they need brought down a peg or something because yeah. they don't understand what good in the world like. I if you're promoting like. Never got full force like punched in the face, you know. What I, mean? <laughs> like, I don't know if you noticed, man, but my nose is broke. Like, I got full force punched in the face in high school and it broke my nose. And I can't That's... explain like how valuable that Good was. That was for you. <laughs> like, I've, I've had I, a few experiences as, as well. I, I've played a couple of gigs with this particular band. I'm going to try my best not to identify this person, ah, right? But, right. The, the singer of this particular band has, just by watching them perform, has no co- concept of like you know, emotional attachment to what the fuck they're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, because the, the, the performance that they give is so fucking dramatic, it's like virgin on Disney, that it just <laughs> seems so insincere, like they're trying so hard to be sincere that it becomes yeah. a cause. so fucking insincere. And I remember watching this artist like performing, with like the band and I was saying to the band like like me and Gary right the drummer mm. I'm <laughs> like, still trying I'm sitting here trying to figure out who who, who it is but... I don't th- I don't I don't think you would know them man but um right. I just don't want to I just don't want to fucking <laughs> say <laughs> <laughs> but um me and Gary the drummer like we were like pre- maybe like nineteen twenty and he picked me up from my mum's and we were like parked outside 
like just where the garages were, and there was an orange walk on. And this guy like had obviously deviated for the the walk and had like ended up in my mum's street for some reason. My mum's where my mum lives is like pretty fucking rough, and mm-hmm. uh, this this guy was like standing outside. Uh, like another guy was like standing outside his fucking flat, like the building. Mm-hmm. And this guy who came away for the orange walk walks down. He's like got a fucking flag, like a, a Union Jack flag, and he's got a, a bottle of wine. And he threw the bottle of wine at this guy, and it smacked mm-hmm. him in the head. And right. then he ran at him and pulled a hammer out and just started smashing his head in with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> is that, that's is a musician. Me and Gary are just sitting in the car watching this whole fucking thing unfold. Mm. And Gary just <laughs> Gary just drove away, man. And like in that moment where we were watching this fucking artist, like I turned to Gary and I was like, like they have never witnessed something like that. Like they have yeah. never been in a situation where they've seen something so emotionally fucking distressing. Because when you do experience something like that, man, like it sets you up for life. You know what I mean? It sets you up. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. So you think that was like a good thing for them to witness because it's just like, toughened them up a bit and made them. Well, like I don't know what is that is an artist. <laughs> what connection you're having to your audience by <laughs> pretending to reach into the stars? Like, but it is so not real. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. there were, maybe something did happen. To them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, like, I, I can't imagine I... somebody that's pretending to be like fucking Elsa for Frozen has been, been through anything particularly traumatic, you know what I mean? Traumatic, aye. No, I agree. I do think, like, sometimes just you, you need to, like, be, no saying, like, attack with a, with a hammer and all that sort of stuff, but you do need, you do need to, like, be brought down a bit because it's just a lot of people get so much self-importance of, like, I, I some people, I just, they need brought down a, a, a peg or two, no, no one, like, a, a nasty way, but see if you're like posting about like a lot of these ones are going to Dubai and they're saying that they're going to work and they're like during a pandemic and they're going to sunbathe and take pictures and and it's just it's not work like yeah. it's not work and it's insulting to other people that are like that are struggling and working and they're away taking pictures and getting a tan and claiming that it's work and it, see an actual fact i mean it is now like that but that's our fault for allowing this to be to be a thing to be a job yeah to, well, to put so much stock into these people that are like it's like it's hard not to, to be better about things because you're doing something like you you yourself as well you you if you write something or you put something out you throw it out there and you're like I've put my heart and soul into doing this and nobody cares. But then you like see someone posting a picture of their, themselves living this, like or the, even these shows are like X on the beach and all, all these different things. It's like, why does anyone care? It's, there's no talent. There's nothing. I understand it's like entertainment and it's just like easy viewing to, to sit down and, you know, but I think that's what's important though, is that the people who are going and doing that think they have like a self-importance Maybe I'm just generalising, but I would imagine that they have a self-importance where they think that people are rooting for them when they go mm-hmm. into these things. But what they don't realise is that people that are watching them, it's it's like a fucking, like, the Coliseum Gladiator thing where people are rooting <laughs> for them to fail, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I watch those programmes because I want to see the worst situation that could possibly unfold from that, you know what I mean? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I, I, like, I want to see a fucking guy running through... Love Island with a chainsaw fucking hacking everyone's head off, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I'm watching it, like I'm not... Uh, I'm well, not maybe they would, maybe then they would, maybe then they would uh, learn something, to maybe take them down a peg or two, you know? But it's like, that. it goes back to the thing where you say some people just obviously haven't been punched in the face. Yeah. And <laughs> would, would teach them to... to I, uh, I really hope that's on my gravestone, man. <laughs> I, I, well, it's a fair, but I mean, it's a fair point, not that like you advocate. So, but some people do. Some people do. Just like, I think, like some people deserve to be punched in the face, is a different yeah. thing from some people haven't been punched in the face. Mm. You know what I mean? Aye, but it's like I mean, it's just true both ways. Like some some people do deserve to take his. Mm-hmm. Aye, that's that, maybe that's a, another subject that you don't want to. 
But there's like loads of things that there's no there's loads of things that I've um, that I've experienced that like that I've I've had issues with over the years with other people like music and stuff like that, like conversations that I've had with different like organizers or whatever and sometimes you just think like you would love to. You would love to, but you've got like yeah. that professional sort of side, but you just you can't get into that um it looks really bad. <laughs> like you can, you obviously, it just looks really bad on your on your part, you know. Um, but there are some people that just they, they get away with so much shit, and they do yeah. deserve it. But uh, <laughs> I suppose they'll continue to. This is the thing. I I think there's an argument for that. Like n- nobody deserves to be punched in the face because, like, well, maybe you just shouldn't use violence. But there's so much value in being punched in the face. Like having been someone that was punched in the face, I feel yeah. like I can speak on that topic. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. because yeah. for me, there's just so much value in it. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's what I, I there's a kind of, <laughs> I don't think we should get into this. <laughs> I don't think we should get into this one. <clears throat> well, like, can we cut, like, should we cut this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. And where I was going to go, where you, we probably would have really wanted to cut, <laughs> but it's mm-hmm. fine. We just won't get any of that. Um, I... <laughs> maybe, maybe me saying like some people deserve to be punched in the face should be, but but that is like that is not that is true. Like there's like there's so many different issues. I think, and I would stand by that. I don't, I don't care. Some people do deserve. It. I know violence and, and all that sort of stuff isn't the answer, but I like to but, be punched in the face as well. Some people like it. I mean, I like it. You know, sometimes. So, athletes, I mean, there's athletes out there getting punched in the face mm-hmm. for their job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? I think sometimes it should be like a case of just <laughs> never mind, no, <Never> <laughs> no, 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 never mind. Um, <laughs> right, so maybe we should change it. <laughs> I've done it again. I actually said that. I actually said before, like, just remember <laughs> not to. To go yeah. down that route again. Cool. Um, maybe you could put like a an interlude or something. Just play some music or something. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep this in. It's fine. Right. <laughs> I don't think we've said anything particularly outrageous so far. No, I, I, but I, like, a... I think I got I got a lot of being punched in the face. Mm-hmm. And I said that people deserve to be punched in the face, but some people do. Though. Some people do. I, I agree, and and that's and I think that's actually that kind of leads you into see uh, if those people come forward by it. Imagine they came forward as a minority. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't feel represented. The people that need like deserve to be punched in the face. Yeah, but we should be represented in fucking social <laughs> media. Like, true. But then again, like that's that's what we're talking. That's another thing I think that when you are trying to like make a, a name or or trying to put your put like it's talk it's talking about like certain subjects like I just wouldn't touch on because I don't have experience in in, the, in that issue or whatever. And um, I but I think there's a thing about like I you've got to guard so much of what you say. Like it like we're having a conversation there, and I'm thinking like oh, I've just said said this and I'm thinking of all the I mean nobody's going to care but it's just the implications yeah. of, of me saying that and it makes you think a lot more whereas if I wasn't doing this and I didn't have like an image or um, like you wouldn't be you would care so much you wouldn't be putting so much stock in it into that being an issue you know I think this is why it was one of the reasons I wanted to do the podcast man was because I like I want to find the people that do like that, that don't care that I've just said that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I would like to pair them with my music, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I would, I would prefer that those people like my music than, than those people that want to come up and don't know anything about me, don't know that I grew up watching some guy getting his fucking face hammered in, mm-hmm. and they're going, you're the greatest thing in the world, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, I was a shite bag and drove away with my friend from All somebody... Right. The fucking face hacked in with a hammer. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's my life. I mean, probably in your best interest, but to drive away, you know, at that point in time. I think so. I, think so. so, I mean, I know there's the thing about like being a hero and stuff like that, and I do advocate like sticking up for your fellow fellow man. But 
I also advocate like keeping your your own life, you know. So that's yeah. that's there's a, a good argument that that guy was a hero. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, all we've seen was a guy with a cape on, part on someone. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's a that's a shame. But was he all right after that? I don't know. We never went back. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, not went back off it. I went back home, mm. but he just wasn't there. But you never heard anything, so you'd imagine he survived. So yeah. Always, always okay. Yeah. Um, Probably doesn't have a face anymore, but. <laughs> That's a shame. Was that, did, did you say that was with your pal that. Um, that he, 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 did you say he witnessed that? Or he, because I see when you were talking about it, I thought it was mm-hmm. like the guy that had never seen anything sort of bad happening before in his life that, that got battled with a hammer. No, no. So what I was saying was, so I, I was playing a gig, right? Mm-hmm. And we were sharing the bill with this other band, mm-hmm. right? So I'm sitting next to Gary, who experienced this thing with me. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guy, face hammer done when we yeah. were young. Like I grew up with Gary, like we basically started playing music at the exact same time and mm-hmm. started the band like a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Uh, so we grew up together and seen all this shit happen in our fucking town. And um we, so we are sitting next to each other at this gig watching this band playing and like I turned mm-hmm. to him and said like that person has never <laughs> seen someone get their yeah, face yeah, yeah. Up, you know what I mean? And like uh-huh. He understood where I was coming from because, like, there's just so much. I don't know. Like, I felt like when when I went out to like fucking play music martyrs with fluorescent hearts. Right, I always like mm-hmm. talk. About this is like the good old fucking days. Or whatever. <laughs> like, when we yeah. played some festival in Singapore, but like, I remember feeling so disconnected for everything that was going on around us because everyone was so like getting their face brushed up with makeup and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like there was like a pure hustle and bustle and I, I felt so connected to the fucking stuff that I'd seen mm-hmm. that's, that's why I think there's like a pure conflict because if you're somebody that's trying to chase all those fucking things which I was like trying to chase stardom like I never felt like I belonged there you know what I mean mm-hmm. like, just yep. constantly being dragged back to this fucking I'm a bullshit human being from a pure mm-hmm. shite, shite hole you know what I, mean? I, I, I totally I, I totally agree with that. I, I remember it's like kind of like you feel like a fish out of water. I think a lot of the t- like I, I I've experienced that and loads of different things that I've went or like a, even just the the feeling of like when you're on a bill with other, other musicians. I often like I wonder a lot if other people are thinking this like feel the same. You know, it's like oh I'm playing a bill with this person. They're amazing. They'll get this. Can do this and do that. And I just feel kind of like I'm just happy to be here. Like. I feel kind of out of out of my depth a bit, yeah. And even like different events or like I I use that um, Abbey Road thing a lot, and it, it it's because it really made me see like the other side of things. You know, it made me see like um, just going to these events or going to these sorts of sort of places where it, it is like a different. I hate even saying a different class of person because they're no better than than you or I, you know. But it's just a different different kind of vibe as such, um, and and just feeling like out my depth a bit. And uh, my dad, like my mom and dad, like shouting and cheering, and nobody else was like cheering because it wasn't that kind of thing, you know. But they don't care because they're proud and that they're going to do that, you know. Yeah. You just feel kind of like out your out your depth. I don't know if it's being Scottish or being like. Um, because not everyone feels obviously feels like that, but it's just a lot of these um, different events. You're just you feel like you'd. I I I'd, I'd be worried. I've said this in the in the past. Like, see, even going to different things, um, like maybe I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't drink because I know that I would be more like vocal and and um, and more. Yeah. possibility of embarrassing myself if I'd had a drink so I would just I wouldn't you know and it's it's a shame but it's just that it's that feeling that you're look you're out of your depth and you want to you don't want to make it like a bad impression and I think that's maybe something that happens when you're from like Glasgow or you're from um like that this area you know yeah 
I think the good thing with the way that maybe not just the industry, but the way the world's moving these days is that like people are gravitating more towards the folk that they relate to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like Louis Capaldi's a fucking perfect example of somebody that has managed to retain who he actually is and appeal mm-hmm. to many people. So like finally somebody that speaks the way I do. You know what I mean? And and, mm-hmm. and he, he just ha- he happens to be a fucking great singer. Yep. He's, just, he's just a guy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know, like, m- maybe that's a result of our fucking generation, man, of, like, people that just c- couldn't, like, hack walking into a room full of fucking people that were stuck up or whatever, or maybe mm-hmm. not stuck up, like, were just privileged enough to have never seen a guy get his face hammered in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and just not relating to anybody, man, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's even like because I, I I think we've spoke about this before as well. But me like people just know me as as that guy that sings sad tunes and doesn't have much of a personality. And I think like in the past I've just said things and I've or I've said things that have maybe been a bit that could land me in hot water because I have an opinion on something. And if I've got an opinion on something, I find it very hard to. Not to to say it, to say it, but you know, like you see a lot of the different artists will vlog or they'll they'll do different things like that. Um, and I've always kind of stayed away from that side of things because it's not that I've got nothing to say. I just really don't want to get myself in in a situation where like it's like the sound bite thing, you know, you yeah take something and twist it. But I think like people like Louis Capaldi have made it a lot more like it's easier for me to I can sing sad tunes but I can still put up like a stupid video of me talking about and having a, a joke or whatever and it's made that kind of thing a bit more like normal yeah uh, it's like you see the person behind the music yeah I feel a bit easier putting who you actually are out there mm-hmm. um, I totally I get that and like the manager that I had when I was in the other band like he was forever because, like, you'll probably see that I post like a lot of really outrageous stupid shit on Facebook. I've noticed. Never told me me like you need to fucking stop doing that. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like, um, I'm trying to market the band and and but, like it didn't make sense because I write like really fucking poppy love songs. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's yep. Just what I have always gravitated towards, but mm-hmm. like personality. It's like a complete contrast for that one. I'm, I'm the like, same. Totally same. Yeah. yeah. It's but it's, it, it's like you can have a pure, like, it's, I think a lot with me being my sad face, like, see, see, my face is quite sad sometimes. Like, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm singing or whatever, because I make a lot of, like, I've got a lot of facial expression or, like, um, like I make a lot of stupid faces when I sing, and I think that's just, like, I get comments regularly saying, Are you okay? Um, <laughs> Blink twice. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> like all these sort of things. I've never actually been told that, but I do uh, get asked a lot. Like you look like some. You've been really hot, and you've been. Uh, like, I'm genuinely thinking about what I'm having for dinner. Yeah, and I never. I just the way my face is, but people would genuinely think if they never met me and hadn't, and they would think that I was pure miserable, and I was just like this really sad, depressed singer. And that's only part of it. Like, so, yeah. I mean, sometimes you do get like that, but aye. I think like that's just as an artist how you express that side of yourself, though. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, I don't I, sing particularly like maybe when I'm doing like busking stuff, like uh-huh. kind of sad songs. But um, I don't think in my day to day life I'm like just this pure poppy. I know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially not for it. That's man, the way that that band was like sold to people. Mm-hmm. There was we weren't sold to people as if we had like an edge. Mm-hmm. We were like fucking I don't know, like fucking one direction like, with guitars, man. Mm-hmm. Manufactured kind of like yeah. I I've, I've done my time in the boy like well it was different. I mean I've had guitars unfortunately, but it was uh, I've done my time in that and that sort of not to the scale that Fluorescent Hearts obviously were, but uh, and the management, it's, it's just like a different world because you can't, 
like I remember I smoked cigarettes at the time. I was told like you can't categorically cannot uh, smoke cigarettes in front of like these kids, which I understand. But at the time, I was like, <laughs> I was like, but I'm really choking for a like I don't know. <laughs> so I'd like try and go out to another room, and then I'd get caught smoking and then i'd get like pulled in with a manager and disciplined about that people I needed to and i just didn't care like i just did not care uh and i and i was like, even like like shaving like i don't think this is like this is a good look i don't i don't it's just i can't be out shaving it just now because i'm not going anywhere yeah. but when someone tells me that i can't like uh, and the, the band when i had to the management uh in that sense like i was told shave your face all the time you cannot have one hair on your face just smooth and if, if, if i'm told that it just makes me want to, to like have stubble well, yeah you know because i'm told I'm, I'm not allowed to so i don't know if it was the best fit for me anyway to, well, i know it wasn't the best fit but i just like just i think there's people that we've spoke about this before man but like there's people that are willing to do that and i think that's fair enough like that they are willing to go through the whole process and then like if you look at fucking Harry Styles, like Harry Styles has came out the other side with complete control of what he does, man. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he's his own fucking image that he wants to put out, man, and that's cool. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I think that's it's just a long journey to fucking get there. It's a lot, mm-hmm. a lot again, a lot to fucking sacrifice to to just get to a point where you can actually do exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. Um. It was because these people are so big, like even the bands are so big, or like like people like Taylor Swift, like they would never need even a label any anymore. Like it's just their name is so big, everyone wants to see what they're doing, so they've got that. They're they're able to do that, um, to do whatever they choose to do after a certain point. It's like you're trying to work your way up, you you can't. But it's rare that a lot of these people are um, a lot of these bands and stuff. It's rare that. If, if they don't reach obviously the heights of One Direction, which rewind, I just said the name, but rewind uh, never, <laughs> they never quite made it to that point. Uh, so it's like a lot of the time these people can be in these bands and then they just disappear because nobody wants to touch them anymore because they were in this band and <laughs> and they've lost credibility. Um, it was like One Direction that, that never happened. I think everyone was just shocked at how good the stuff that Harry Styles and that brought out. Um, yeah. and, one Direction are a sort of like bad example, I suppose, because they were, in terms of a boy band, quite credible, you know what I mean? Mm, I thought so as well. I, I, I liked a lot of their stuff. I did listen, I like it. I, I did like a lot of it. Um, I looked like I was taking the piss, but I, I actually... <laughs> no, no, like, most of the later stuff, like, the stuff before they... I liked a lot of that, and... Yeah. Um, so it's... I don't, I don't, I just don't get into that whole like the the credible, not credible stuff. It's it's it's, it's the I think it's just what's important. Mm-hmm. They have good songs, which mm-hmm. they do. You know what I mean? Like what Ed Sheeran wrote, like some fucking great One Direction songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they could yeah. easily been fucking Ed Sheeran hits. Mm-hmm. I think Ed Sheeran's wrote for like the majority of the, the artists that are out the shows always, and you can always tell. I think as well, yeah. you can tell a lot of the time. Uh, Niall Horan. Do you know who Ryan Tedder is? Ryan Tedder, aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you can, I, I feel like you can tell straight away if Ryan Tedder's written mm-hmm. a song. Mm-hmm. He done one for Kelly Clarkson that got him in hot water because it sounded. A lot like yeah. Halo, Halo or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he'd originally written the Kelly Clarkson song, and then Beyonce heard that demo mm-hmm. and said, I want a song that sounds like that. So he wrote Halo for Beyonce because she heard Already Gone. Mm-hmm. And then Beyonce put Halo out before Kelly Clarkson put Already Gone out. So by yep. the time Kelly Clarkson went to put Already Gone out, Halo Book was a massive fucking hit. Mm-hmm. Her song flopped, and I don't know if she did sue Ryan Tedder, but I know that she like, mm-hmm. kind of cut ties with him. She did have been pure bridge, you know, about that. Yeah. When you think about that. Yeah, like, it's the exact same chord progression. I'm sure it's like the opening line is like 
same melody and almost the same lyric. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's oh, it's just like ju- it's, you listen to it, you can tell uh, straight away. But crazy. Right. Fuck it though. Two I massive. Thought, I know. He's like he's the uh, right tether. Like he is written for so many of the big sort of um, artists and stuff like that. But One Republic are great as well. Like they're yeah. an amazing band. Uh, I've I know what I'm conscious of the time, but. I've always like I think you were talking about it earlier as well about how you're trying to you want to try and get into like song songwriting for like other people and stuff like that and I think that's I don't know if I would be a hundred percent happy doing that because I like the feeling of being yeah uh, singing myself I'd be raging if I wrote something and I really want that for myself but it wasn't that is a difficulty like because I still enjoy my own music and I still enjoy the fantasy of like when I'm in the middle of writing a song uh, how that would feel mm. in front of a crowd of people singing that song mm. um, but I don't know like I, I, I'm I, for, for the amount of musicians I've spoken to I think how I feel about the production side of things is quite strange like I think it's not that often that musicians come along and actually enjoy the process of like writing and recording and actually being in the studio, like I could, mm-hmm. I, I could comfortably work in a studio just producing music. Um, right. I don't know. I, I just did okay. totally enjoy the whole process of it, man. Mm-hmm. I enjoy the process, but I just don't feel like I think it's maybe maybe I would enjoy the process a bit more if it wasn't like me that was doing it. If I if I wasn't the one that was in the booth of singing and and doing all that stuff, but I think it's. There's just like it's. I think it's a time thing. I think if I had the opportunity to be somewhere in a studio where I was able to um, spend as much time on something as I wanted, I think it'd be a lot more of an enjoyable experience. Um, but it's just the pressure of it, and I think I just get. I, I'm quite like antsy as a person. I like to be able to jump, like go and do things, and I hate sitting in the one place for too long. I hate like. I, I find it hard to focus on something for too long. Um yeah. so I don't I don't think I think I would struggle with that side and also just like if I wrote a song for for someone else and I was like, I really want this from for me and then they were releasing it and stuff, I'd be like I, I, I would find it hard I would find that hard to not yeah. get any recognition really or like to I think especially now where like songs like producers and fucking managers and stuff are getting credits on songs so what your contribution to the the song is to people who know that you've written on it Mm -hmm. is like kind of diluted you know what i mean like people's perception of what you've contributed to the song but like the bts you know the band bts like they've got like a lot of their songs i don't listen to to any of it it's just it's not my thing at all but uh Either like ten, like sometimes ten songwriters on a song that's like that that is like mundane <laughs> lyrics. There's no like that has got a place. A lot of people like that stuff. It's just easier listening. It's just people like it. I'm not shitting on that at all. But it is like it's just mundane. You're like, how do they have ten writers saying? It's like, totally is because there's there's people. That are involved in the process that take songwriting credits now because like mm-hmm. maybe the producer didn't get paid well or whatever or do you know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. to say take a song credit over like I don't know like getting paid as a producer. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. I'd prefer so, to do that to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think I'd prefer to like do that in terms of just rather than just going into a studio and paying a flat. <laughs> You, know, you said that man, because I actually know somebody that has written on their stuff. So they are. Aye. It's probably yeah, so. uh, Brian. Aye, Brian Laurie. Aye. Yeah, yeah uh, and and that all like Gartland as well done it. It's like an amazing opportunity and uh that's that was not an attack on either of them at all because yeah. if I was asked to like write on it I would jump in it and it's it's, it's more just fucking highlighting that like the fact that there's so many songwriters on it 
like takes away from it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they, yeah. like he's he's a writer and clearly contributed to a song, but like mm-hmm. who are the other fucking guys on it? You know what I mean? Yeah, he's a he's a great writer as well. I think he wrote yeah. for he wrote something for Gabriel Applin as well. Um, I heard about that man. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> but I, it's like a lot of these writers. I think there's Ola Gartland as well. She's a fantastic writer. Really, really good lyrics and like really nice lyrics and, and all that stuff and um but it's like if there's so many different I think they get sent sections. I think that's what happens with these like big bands. I think they get sent sections that they've got to to write to and then they'll take out like the best parts that they think from from the different sections or whatever. Uh, I don't know how exactly it works, but suppose if um I suppose it's like a, a it's a way that obviously it's quite clearly worked for uh, BTS so Yeah. Nah. And it's not like yeah, music that anything out though, man. They could put on like a fucking ten hour noise album and it would probably still yeah. sell. I, I, I know. <laughs> but it's not music that you're gonna sit down and think that I'm really gonna gain like like a, a feeling for I know obviously there's there'll be like young girls and stuff that are just massive fans, you know, just in general, but it's not something that I would sit down and listen to for like actual to look at lyrics and to look it's just easy listening. Yeah, and a lot of people love it. So I don't. I prefer the sad songs. I prefer the the music, the lyrics that are like really sort of deep and and you get to actually delve in and think about them. But the reality is, like most people don't. Most people don't care. They just want to listen to, to something. If it's got a nice melody, a cool melody, then that's the happy with it. I kind of realised recently that. Not that it's always been like this, but more recently, I've I've started caring less about mm-hmm. lyrics but not because I because I don't care about it it's just such a fucking contradictory <laughs> but like just more that like when I'm listening to a song now I, I start I, I tend to take in the melody maybe it's just because it's what's being presented to me now because there's so much mm-hmm. fucking sincere music out there man but yep. like, I, I take in the melodies and the production first before I actually even think about the lyrics and it's not until mm-hmm. like I hear like people like yourself doing acoustic covers of like popular songs, and I start going, "Those lyrics are actually fucking great." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I do. I kind of agree with you a lot, actually. In, in that sense, like I, I know I'm going on about lyrics, but I do feel like the the melody and stuff is is a huge uh, like draw to me. Um, but it also, like if I if I hear a song, it's literally like. It could be a great melody, but if it's just like I'm trying to think a really generic line here that I'm a, you know what I mean, like just the most generic, stupid, like repetitive chorus or whatever, I would it would instantly turn me off for it. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to. There's a line I watched a YouTube video and there's a line that's like used in fucking everything. It's like tonight or like today or something. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's like tonight because it's such a like non-word. Mm-hmm. Like, you could say like th- the greatest fucking line of all time, and then the resolve to resolve the melody, they'll say like the word tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> tonight. Oh, like something like that. That's the exact <laughs> melody I had in my head, man. Uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's true. Actually, I kind of so many artists do. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I I do. I probably have at some point. Mm-hmm. Probably, probably, I don't know. Oh, one of like <laughs> one of like many, many songs that I've probably half finished or something. Mm-hmm. It'll be somewhere. Um We should probably uh, wrap up, eh? I was yeah for like fucking ages. <laughs> I know. We finally got a podcast done, man. <laughs> I c- I have to say, like uh, anyone that I talk to, I, I could talk for I was just about the most mundane stuff, so I, I actually think this is pretty good time wise. Yeah, well, it's by my standards. <laughs> and, uh, well, everyone watching this won't even know that we recorded a full podcast before this. <laughs> we did record a full podcast, but we you watched it back and thought we should. Uh, I thought it was too good, man. I thought it was, it was too, too good. good. Yep. It's one of those things that's going to need um, like. One day there'll be a podcast Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. 
it'll also be they are the, mm -hmm. the the most successful unreleased post podcast ever. <laughs> Do you know what all do you know what you should do? You should just like wait until I get to like massive heights, you know, like yeah. really like really famous, which I'm hoping to obviously I'm just gonna just pop your clips up and I, had a hour long podcast with yeah. you. And just just leak them like consistently. <laughs> just like what it be sound bites, uh, just leak them. That's a good idea. I maybe kill my career. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fucking waiting to catch you. I'm not just waiting to turn off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as, as you said, it's, uh, that kind of thing is quite character building. So, as well. Um, oh, I, I suppose I should plug uh, my, Aye, cool. my stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, my, my Spotify is Liam Doyle. You find me on. Not there. Um, just my name. There, there is a guy that does musicals. It's not me. Um, uh, you see in the picture, I mean, it looks nothing like what I'm looking just now, but you kind of see. Uh, I, uh, YouTube, Liam Doyle 1994. Um, Instagram, Liam Doyle 1994. Twitter, Liam Doyle 1994. And Facebook, Liam Doyle Music. Uh, at I would say I kind of I use like Facebook and Instagram probably the most. So um, if you and Spotify and you know, all that, obviously I don't need to earn money as well. So please stream my music. Uh, and I'm in the studio next week, this week coming, and hopefully new stuff soon. Awesome man! Cool. Thanks so much for doing the podcast and all that shit. Oh, and, uh, I'll get you back. On.